You know, uh, what, what can you tell me about what we're looking at here? There's a bunch of different layers. What, 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 there's no lahars here. What, uh, what, what, what features do you see? What, what structures do you see that you recognize from some of our lectures in the past? Okay, well, do we actually see dunes, or do we see something that, that is a relic of dune? Yeah, there's a feature, right, there's a, rel there's a feature here that's a relic of a dune. What do we call those features? Cross bedding. Cross beds, right on. Right on, see, that's kind of an index phrase, like an index mineral. It's only from a certain temperature range, index fossil, only index phrase or index word only during a certain period, like groovy. Yeah. <laughs> groovy. See, cool is not an index word because they've used cool since the Roy They've used it all through time. I bet you talk to a caveman and go, cool. <laughs> it's, uh, there was an article about that recently, the words that have been here since earliest humans. Did you see that? That was really interesting. And, uh, and I bet cool, cool was not one of those words, but I bet it was. So, so uh, cross beds, right? Cross beds are left by dunes moving. Now, what direction were they moving? That away, absolutely. And that away is what direction? I forgot the compass. I have a compass. West, absolutely, because we're kind of facing north. So, what are we? What else are we seeing here besides just the cross beds? A very simple structure. What are we, what are we seeing? Yeah. An exposure, an outcrop. Um, how about just bedding? Bedding. Bedding is, here's some bedding, right? Bedding is just the layering. You, layers of cross beds include bedding. And up here we have bedding. Uh, here we have some bedding that's uh, some structures that are almost horizontal. They're kind of like cross beds, except they're horizontal, like sheets of sand removing up in the top here, and they were moving pretty fast, and they were carrying particles like gravels and cobbles, right? So we can see changes in the energy of the stream. Up higher, we see lots of bigger rocks. What if you went to a modern river, and you went out to the center of the Columbia River? What would you see? What do you see near the edge of the Columbia River? Sand. If you went out to the deepest part of the channel where the current was strongest, you'd see, you'd see rocks rounded. You'd see a channel active channel out there. There's some big stuff going by. And that's, so we see that the, the channel changing through time. This is an ancestral Columbia River deposit. This has been called the Troutdale Formation. And uh, I don't know the particular age of this stuff here, but the Troutdale Formation is very extensive. It actually goes all the way up to Kelso, all around Battleground. It's a formation, it's mappable. Here is the, this is the type of valley with this whole highway here in the town of Troutdale. Where the sound guy goes. Say that over there. One day, we were down at Ording, and we, I was with the, the, the Ording fire chief, and, we were, and they kept saying, okay, now I want you guys to go out, come out from behind that building and come approach us like we're talking about the Lahar and the hazards. Okay, so we'd be walking. And I've known this guy the part. So we're walking along. And they, okay, can you do it again? We've got one more take of that. So we go back, we do it again, third or fourth time. Finally they go, okay, one more time. We just we didn't quite get her. So we go back one more time. And we decide <laughs> that while we're back there, we see a paper bag with an old wine, empty wine bottle in it. So Scott goes, hey, let's give him something to film this time. So we came out. We both came out with this wine bottle like this, you know. <laughs> we were so mad. We're so mad. God. <laughs> You're not serious. And go, this is the fourth time you did this, dude, and we're volunteers, okay? You're not paying us any money. <laughs> Lighten up. <laughs> Either that or we're leaving. Take your Discovery Channel special. Here we go. So the Troutdale Formation ranges, how old is it? It's an ancestral Columbia River deposit. It represents the channel of the Columbia River. And we can see the river is flowing that way. 
and it, it ranges in age from roughly six, seven million years old, possibly even older, to about a million years ago or so. That's the, the extent of the age range of this unit. Most of the gravelly, cobbly stuff is to the north, and, the, and that's older, and the younger stuff is south of here. This is kind of in the dividing line between the young and the old deposits. If you go south of here, to the, you'll, you'll find this formation is more sandy, not as cobble and rich as this one. So this has pebbles and cobbles. Actual zones that are better cemented up there that you, you call actual sandstones, probably. Not so much cemented down here. So this is a major uh, geologic unit. In fact, I was mentioning to the folks in my van that uh, the big Kelso landslide that happened in 1999, as we were driving through Longview and Kelso, those big hills around there are what the big landslide that had 60-some homes on it in 1999. Largest landslide disaster in the U.S., or at least one of the largest in terms of the total number of homes on a moving landslide, was that, that one landslide. In fact, that year was also when they had the Carlisle Beach landslide in, in, uh, over by Steamboat Island. There were 23 homes on that landslide, and they had another one at Sunset Beach, uh, west of Olympia. And I forget how many homes were on that one, but it, it was a bad year for rain, rain, rain. It saturated the ground. And so we had a lot of ancient landslides that were just peaceful and happy for a while until they got so saturated that the internal friction of the grains was compromised by the, now the water pressure is pushing the grains apart. And finally, they just, the tipping point was reached and they started moving and they were coming down. And, and this formation was one of the ones that's moving. In fact, this road. Uh, you'll see they have screens on it up here, as we, and they've had screens on it around where we passed. They've had some huge rock slides come down in the winter in these very deposits. Okay, so the next thing, and then we'll, we'll move on. The next stop after this is the Women's Forum Visitor Center. This, this is the old Columbia River Highway that was built during the 30s, during the, during the last Great Depression. Remember this one, we had the stimulus package and the stimulus funds that came out for doing things. During the last Great Depression, which started in 1929, they had the, the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. They said, let's create work to do. We know there's a lot to do. Let's give citizens money and pay them to do stuff. They paid Woody Guthrie to write songs. They paid, they paid people to build this old highway on the River North. It was a great program. And so we're going to go on the historic highway up to the Women's Forum viewpoint. It's, you'll, you'll recognize it from if you've seen Postcards of the Gorge. It's a place where a lot of the postcards have been... Uh, pictures have been taken. And we're going to be looking out from that place to Crown Point, which is our, the stop after that where we're going to eat lunch. And Crown Point is sitting on a huge lava flow, and it's a beautiful dome-shaped building that was built during that same period of time. It's made of marble, and it's absolutely awesome. And they have an espresso stand in there, by the way, and clean restaurant. So that's going to be our lunch stop. So we have one more stop, one more view stop, where we'll do sketches and stuff. And, talk about the landscape, and then we'll have the lunch stop, okay? Um, but one more thing to do here. I want to look at some of these rocks, and not the rocks that the, the highway department brought in. I want to see some of the rocks. I'm not going to see one of the rocks. Wow. These look like some of the rocks we broke no, a couple of years ago. They're still here. It's amazing. Yeah. So we don't even have to break it. But you can see some of these rocks came down from above, right? And you can see there... Um, hey, can I have my rock hammer? Please. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> yes. Yes, I just like this flag. Thank you, Bert. Put anyone in the back like a rock. Yeah. Pass around. You asked you ask if you wanted to. What's this one? Oh, okay. Volcanic. Looks like pumice. Except pumice floats. Would that float? No. No, that's called scoria. Actually, that isn't even scoria. It's just vesicular basalt. So take a... I gave it away. I was going to ask you what the rock <laughs> Do that all the time. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. We did pass some flood basalt. That big promontory that's east of, Trout, the west of, east of Troutdale is a basalt cliff of the Columbia River basalt. We're going to be seeing lots of basalt this afternoon. So this here, look at this rock. Here, this is a classic basalt. Fine grain, looks like black ice cream. Um, this is Columbia River basalt, right? 
And this is even vesicular. It's got little gas bubbles in it. So this would be probably from the top of one of the lava flows, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Is this the rocky? Not Pringles. Pringle what? I heard my name again. <laughs> Pringle. So why was the ancestral river carrying a lot of basalt? What's the deal? What's upstream, huh? Uh, a lot of the same kind of stuff. Now it's got some secondary looks like in there. What is that? iPhone. <laughs> Very different. Is it a case? So, it's a case, here's some, the, this is probably Mount Hood rock right here. This gray speckled rock is an andesite, it looks like. In fact, it even looks like it's been glaciated. That's very hard. Like I'm playing croquet there. <laughs> so here's a here's a, a great a typical example of andesite, right? Um, porphyritic. It's got the floating crystals, but a fine grain, uh, what we call a ground mass in between the crystals. So this is the kind of uh, igneous rock that was. How, how's a porphyritic rock form? Slow, slow and easy. You know, at just the right temperature. So the enzymes have time to work. No, that's mashing for beer. Um, how does a porphyritic rock form? Geology scholars. Speckled texture. What's fine grain mean, igneous rock? Fine grain means cool, cool fast quickly. or slow. Cool quickly. But it's fine grain, but it has these, this, these crystals that were already in there, right? So that means this had a compound cooling history. Some of these crystals formed while the magma was in residence under the volcano. So it was kind of a mush. It wasn't totally liquid, right? And then it erupted really, and then it cooled really fast. This rock, however, had another history. It was, let's put it back together again. Humpty Dumpty. Well, but not quite, but close enough. So this rock was not only rounded, it was almost planed off. So this may have been in a glacier up at Mount Hood. It, it's actually got a, an interesting history of what we call facets and you often find these so-called faceted rocks in, were in the glaciers during the ice age so uh, I mean I'm not saying that's what it is but probably what it is and it's also rounded so it's been in the river bashing against other rocks so lots of stories here from these rocks uh, one time we found some olivine crystals in these basalts down here so so the Columbia River, think of what, where it's coming from. It's coming from Canada. It's coming from the Snake River in Idaho. It's got all this, lots of lavas out there, lots of basalt. Um, I'm going to get a sample of the sand also. Why is this one pink? Uh, pink, let's probably andesite. Let me get that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I like the way you brought that over there. Oh, that's a good one because um, what do you notice about this rock, Evan? Pretty light. Pretty light, low density, absolutely. So, a low density rock, man, yeah. that's amazing. Let's, let's, um, let's take a look at that. It's um, porphyritic, it's got, you know, crystals and the gray, the uh, pink stuff in between. It's vesicular on a microscopic scale. It's got little gas bubbles all throughout it. Look how angular that is, too. That, that rock is not smooth on the outside like that one we just looked at. This is dacite. This is the lava like Mount St. Helens, but it's from Mount Hood. And this pink color, by the way, is very typical of, remember the timberline eruptions I talked about 1,500 years ago? That's when this red dacite was formed. So this is a, this is a rock that was brought down here by those timberline lahars 1,500 years ago. And you know, how it ended up here is just by virtue of, you know, human manipulation of the deposits around here. Because we're standing, this whole road is on lahar deposits right here. And the Sandy River is right over there. So, yeah, that is a great example of Mount, of timberline day site. And it's, you can imagine it was hot when it came out. It's vesicular, it's full of gas bubbles, it's very light. Again, it's not, this rock, you describe it as 
Um, it's not pumice because it wouldn't float. And I wouldn't even call it scoria. I just, it's just vesicular dacite. God, it's totally spongy if you look at it under a hand lens. It's just full of tiny bubbles. So that's the, that's kind of the clue. Football. Da -da. See, it's a surprise that we, that sounded like a sports show. The beginning of a sports show, you know. Yeah, Monday night. Monday night day sight. <laughs> Yawn. Okay, so um, let's see. Trenching tool. What do I do with that now? I can't keep yeah, track of my stuff. I want to. Let's take this one back. Yeah, I found my, found my one. I wanted ranch potato chips. Let's get a sample of this sand and see what's in it. Yeah, we're just looking at rocks right now. It almost looks like it has pumice in it. I need you to. I love you. <laughs> you don't have to look.